afternoon to and thank you for those who stayed. We are going to call to order May 15th, uh, special board meeting for the Board of Education. If we can all rise for the pledge again. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can we please have roll call. Barbara Garcia? Here. Brandau? Here. Isich? Here. Morris? Here. Nichols? Here. Sadu? Here. White? Here. At this point in time, we do have another section put in here for public comment. Did we have any cards turned in? Okay. All right, we are going to move to our action items. We have 5A, we have the KISD Board of Education election resolution. We do have three candidates. Uh, we need to look at choosing up to two of those. So I don't know if somebody would like to give some feedback on those, if somebody had some thought based on the review of them. So yeah, I can share my thought. My thought was um, the the one is returning or potentially returning uh, president of KISD, um, and then between the other two that are new, um, one of them is from TK, um, which I like just from seems more relevant to Caledonia than I think the other one was Grand Rapids somewhere if I remember. So correct. That, that, that's my thoughts. Is the incumbent and the one from TK. Okay. I want to say that and the TK one is also the president of KIASB and possibly the former president of TK. I think. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm good with that. I I would pick whoever uh, can change the rules <laughs> so that we can have one meeting. <laughs> <laughs> We'll put in a request on that, and it will, I'll tell them we had support for that as well. So, any, go ahead. As, and I mean, don't forget, we also need to nominate uh, somebody and an alternate. To Correct. Yes. So, is anybody opposed to? Um, hold on, I got to pull out my paperwork here before I tell you the wrong names. All right. Is anybody opposed to Andrea and Anne? Okay, so that will we will look at those two names then, and then based on that, we also then do need to designate a board member to go place the vote in person. Um, there's nothing shady about this. This is something where our vet vote is literally sent to the KISD. They already know how we're going to vote, so why we have to go vote in person, I really can't answer that question either, but we do. So they know how you're expected to vote before you get there, but we do have to designate one person to go, and then we do designate an alternate as well. Um, this is usually a really quick process. It is not a lengthy meeting um, to get this done, but that's just the way they do it. So does anybody have a great desire to be the designee? There's lots of hands in the room, so I guess that will be me at this point. So I will be the designee. Do I have somebody that's willing to be a backup? Come on, you guys, we gotta have somebody that's willing to be a backup. I, will be, backup. <laughs> I, I, I will be the backup. Okay. okay. So the date of it, well, I mean, let's make sure we have this correct. The date of the meeting is Monday, the 5th of June at 6 p.m. Yes. Correct? Okay. And that's good with you, Jennifer, as a backup? Yes. Okay. All right. So we will put Marcy in as the designee. And the backup of Jennifer. That's the motion. That's what I'm doing. Yes. I'm just telling you for your paperwork, and then I will ask somebody to make the motion. All right. So we are going to do this as an action item: KASD Board of Education election resolution. I gotta get my information right here. Okay. I move that the board approve the resolution designated Marcy White as Caledonia representative and Jennifer Nichols as Caledonia alternate representative for the KISD electoral body to elect the following two candidates, Andrea Hadel, six-year term, and Anne Hamming, six-year term on the KISD Board of Education. We have a second. 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 Second by Brittany. Are there any further questions about this? 
Lisa, roll call. Robert Garcia? Yes. Brandau? Yes. Isich? Yes. Morris? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Sadu? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you to all of you for your work on that. We're now going to move into discussion items. Um, this is, I guess, everybody is emotional in some ways, as so many other things that we're dealing with, but different. Um, we need to talk about superintendent next steps. And we need to do this under, um, we have a superintendent who's sitting here with us. Dr. Merton remains our superintendent until we receive a resignation saying otherwise or a request for resignation for board approval. With that being said, um, we do acknowledge the fact that you were offered the opportunity to go to Kalamazoo at KRESA, um, and congratulations on that. Thank you. That is definitely um, something they will benefit from, and we certainly um, we're glad that you have the opportunity to do that. With that being said, while he is um, looking at things on his end, we also have the ability and the necessity on our end to discuss what our next options will be. Um, in doing that, we have to acknowledge the fact that we all the time have to have a superintendent named. We do not have the luxury of saying, okay, we have a gap in time. From the time he's done, we have to have somebody else named to fill in that gap. With that being said, we have a couple of options. So we can name, if, we, if we're looking at something short-term or long-term, this will dictate maybe what we're, what we're going to be talking about. Okay. We have the ability to name somebody within the district. We have the ability to name somebody from outside the district. If we are going to do a targeted search with the intent that we would be naming somebody or want to name somebody come this fall or before December, then that length of time obviously shortens. Uh, certainly, it wouldn't be my recommendation that even if it was for months that we would be looking at somebody from within the district because that's pulling somebody from another job. I've, I've had a kid in a building where that's happened, and it, it is, it's a lot. Um, the best time frame based on, I've, I've been in, on the board long enough to see this happen two ways. The best time frame for doing a superintendent search and posting those positions is really going to be more of a January, February post, um, looking for an opportune time that superintendents who are working would be maybe possibly looking to consider this as an attractive district, looking to apply and not be disruptive to where they are as well, um, because certainly it's it's a difficult situation. Typically, when we have a superintendent search, we may have candidates, and we get down to a point where you're not down to the last couple until it becomes public information, because certainly nobody wants to be in a position of, if they don't have that opportunity, putting their district at risk of questioning their loyalty or whether they want to be there. With that being said, if we are going to do a search that would happen and then um, open up that posting more in the January, February range, what we're really needing to do is look for an interim superintendent that would be willing to serve that, that capacity for a year, probably starting July 1 through maybe June 30th of 2024. I don't know if anybody has any specific thoughts. I know that I shared this information um, to be discussed or not discussed, but at least brought up at committees knowing that we would be discussing it here tonight. So I don't know if anybody has any sh thoughts that they'd like to share, any questions. Um, certainly this is a uh, process that Tim and I are familiar with, that Dr. Martin is very well familiar with. Daryl as well has, has been down this road with us, so. I, I think the, the, the best use of time and situation would be to look for an interim to guide us through that time period. And uh, I know we threw out a couple names, uh, Dirk being one, I don't know if he, he's been, <coughs> I, I know he was interested or might be available. And then the, the retired uh, soup from Grand Haven was another name. So I think that gives us a little latitude in, in time and if we fill it sooner, great. If not, we're covered. So Dirk, um, for all board members, is um, 
the gentleman who came in and he filled our interim position the last time we had one, um, more than five years ago. Uh, I feel like, I think he was very well received within the district for staff, admin office. I think he did a very good job. I can tell you that I, you know, when this whole thing unraveled, that I did the little digging to find out, you know, where some of these people are that serve. So there are, there are MASB, um, this, this, or the Superintendents Association, these people do keep lists of people that are willing to take these kind of interim spots. So um, Dirk is finishing up his second round at Godfrey Lee. Um, to my understanding, it looks like that he would be wrapping that up, hopefully around the time frame of what we're looking for. I, I agree with you. I think that that would be a, a good place to start. Um, to see he knows our district, he knows um, our administrative staff, he knows other staff. He certainly was a very visible presence in the district when he was here um, and worked very hard. So I, I think that I, I would be very comfortable with that. I don't know how everybody else feels, so I need to have a gist of that. If we are going to specifically look for one person to start with, we would need to have a motion that would give... Um, Mr. Kingsbury, the direction to reach out to start a conversation to see if we, if there is a desire or the ability to um, specifically work out a contract with us. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yes. It okay. Makes sense. Okay. If we're, if we're ready for a motion, I'll make a motion because um, I'm I'm fully on board with. You know, having an interim, especially if we can get one of of Mr. Wheeldryer's Mr. Wheeldryer's character and and capability, um, to you know give us some time to conduct a thorough search, I think is is great. I would agree with that. I'd like to be able to have some time to conduct a thorough search so we can find the most ideal candidate and not do that too quickly. So. Okay. Or we can silently hope that the negotiations fall through and. <laughs> well, there, there is that part too, but you know, I mean, we certainly need to move forward in good faith and do what's best for the district. So we're going to do that. John, do you have a thought? Or I mean, I know you have a thought, but something you'd like to share on this? Yeah, no, I agree with everybody's sentiment. I mean, the more time to look, the better I think we are. So you're not first your hand. In. Okay, Katie, you're. Yeah, I mean, we discussed a little bit in finance, okay. and it seemed like with Dirk, things went smoothly. It's not an issue, so I'm on board with that. Okay. Unless he doesn't accept his contract. Right. In which case, he stays. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jennifer? I agree. You're okay? Okay. So within this process, then, we will make a motion. We will make sure that it's written so that Michelle gives us a nod going forward that this all works. Um, Mr. Kingsbury, your understanding where we're going with this? Once you vote, I will contact Mr. Will Dreyer after I get the specifics. So. Okay, I wasn't asking you to reiterate. I just want to make sure that you were you were we were all in the good good, good spot going forward, right? Okay, all right. So we will follow up on all of that. Um, this will also give us the time and the ability to then um, look at search firms, discuss you know what that best road forward is going forward on who we want to use. Um, what our time frame is, uh, we certainly had a great list of um, criteria or things we were looking for when we got Dr. Martin. Uh, my guess is that list really probably doesn't change a whole lot, um, but that's information that we can, you know, share and walk down this road. But it does um, buy us some time to really do a good job at this and to put that out there. All right. Are we all in agreement? You need me to make a motion? I would love you to make a motion. Uh, I'll see if I can get something close enough to being right, but I move that the board approve Mr. Kingsbury to enter into contract negotiations with Dirk Wheeldryer uh, for the position of interim superintendent for the 23-24 school year. Okay. Does that work for you, Michelle? Okay. Are good? Okay. I'll second that. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on that before we move forward with roll call? What do, what do I do with this? <laughs> we, will, we will write it out on there, but yes. So if okay. you could just write out um, 
the motion and yeah. support it? Yep. Yes. So given the fact that we're doing it as a motion and not just an investigation portion, I'd rather have roll call if we can do it by name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Barbara Garcia? Yes. Randow? Yes. Isich? Yes. Morris? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Sadu? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you to everyone, and we will look for follow up then from you on where we're going or what our options are. Okay. Um, 6B is board committee purpose. So, with this, obviously, when we started having conversations about what our committee structure looked like, um, whether that should change, whether we would go to a workshop as opposed to committees, um, the discussion came up about um, recording committees. Um, and then posting those. Now our committees are very different based on the fact that each committee is really more of, it's almost like an administrative meeting that three board members are sitting on. It is not a decision-making body, therefore it does not fall under the Open Meetings Act for posting or allowing public to attend in that way. We certainly have allowed public um, attendance at those meetings and we've even allowed um, public comment or brief discussions at those meetings. With that being said, certainly how we have our meetings laid out and structured is also something we do with the guidance of our superintendent and how they feel like it functions best, work best, you know, what do we want to do? I think it would be, um, I mean, my opinion is, and this is just my opinion, is this would probably not be the right time to change the structure of any of those at this moment, knowing that right now we just had this discussion of checking with Mr. Real, Mr. Wheel Dryer. It's the last thing in the car wash. That's how you always remember it, right, Daryl? So, yeah, that's what he said. He always tells the kindergartners that's how you remember his name. So, <laughs> well, that's what he said. So anyway, but the, you know, when he comes in and we talk about, you know, what is, you know, what would your, you know, request or what would your suggestions be? I think we want to be open to have those, those conversations then and move forward however it's best to move forward with an interim on board. So I, to me, changing something now, then revisiting a conversation and changing something again doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but I mean, this is totally open to discussion and just, you know, hear what everybody thinks. So are we talking about structure of the committee or? The, both. Or the both is recording them? Both. Okay. I, I personally, like the idea of recording the committee meetings it's it's helpful to go back to i mean i'm a copious note taker but it would be helpful to me to to be able to go back and look at what was said and when i think it makes perfect minutes um i know there are some uh information that's shared at, at committee meetings that sometimes can, if it's out, it can nip us in the bud, and I think that's up to us as trustees to to understand that and to, to hold the trust in those discussions. Um, so I understand the situation we're in. I'm glad we're having the discussion. Any other thoughts? So, you know, I've been in support of recording the committee meetings. It's something that I've wanted to discuss for a while, so I'm really happy that we're talking about it. Um, I would say that as a board member, having those recorded, I echo what Tim said about being able to go back and um, just remember what was said because, you know, your notes can only be so accurate. Um, but at the same time, you know, it would give me as a board member more time to be able to understand the things that we're going to be discussing at upcoming board meetings, uh, we talked about, I had asked the question, is it possible to get the agenda before Friday? And your answer was no, because we need the minutes from the committee meetings in order to put that packet together. Um, I, think, I think it's really more about when the meetings happen. So my answer really wasn't no. It was really more about we would need to change where the meetings happen in order for that to... Because the schedule is too tight. Right. Is so it's not there. about no, and I certainly think that 100% the goal of our administrative team and certainly Michelle is to get those minutes out to us as, as early as they can. But part of the committee structure is that those, those committees are not 
decision-making bodies, but yet they're fluid. There's so many things that change in them. So when the agenda comes to us, our goal is to always make it so that our agendas don't have amendments in them unless all possible. Um, I mean, you know, unless that's the last resort in that. So, you know, certainly that is part of the reason for that happening. So it's not that it can't happen. It's just a matter of we would have to change when we have our meetings or how those look. So I guess my point is just, you know, I can't attend a finance meeting to hear what's going on in order to be well-versed. I have to wait till the meeting minutes come out to try to read that before the board meeting. And the meeting minutes are a summary, but there's a lot more discussion. So I don't want to bring up a point that's already been discussed ad nauseum in committee, discuss again during the board. So in order just to be efficient um, and give positive contribution, it, it seems like that would be helpful for the members who are not on that committee. And, and I think we're all fine talking about something ad nauseum if that's what we need to do. Because, I mean, no, truly, because this is the work of the board. And at the same time, while those committee meetings are, are informational from a standpoint of our administration has time to maybe get feedback or hear from us, the fact is, is when you come to this meeting, and that's why we're hearing things more than once before it comes to a vote for us, so that we do have the chance to discuss those. So absolutely, I understand what you're saying. And I... I I, you know, hearing it more times is never bad. So I appreciate the fact that you're walking down that road and looking at it that way. Regarding, if I may, regarding structure, when I first was elected to the board, we had committees, board meetings, and workshops. Felt like I never left this place. <laughs> so um, I think. There, I like the idea, between the two, I like the idea of, of having a workshop because it provides the open dialogue amongst all of us um, to have a decision at a later time at a full board meeting, but I like that spirited discussion. And I hear, I, will, I would hear more input from the board and we would be able to deliberate the agenda items better, I think, if we, if we were to choose reconsidering our, uh, our structure. Yeah, and, and probably six of one, half dozen of the other to me in terms of committee versus workshop and, and whatnot. But I do think, you know, we are a board of seven, but kind of a team of eight. Um, so in conjunction with whomever we, we have in, as superintendent, what I really wouldn't want to do is, you know, okay, we'll, we'll record the committee meetings in June and July, but then uh, August the new superintendent comes in and we're like, okay, we're going to do workshop and, and other meeting. It just seems kind of weird to, to make that shift a couple of times um, to me. Um, to Tim's point, though, we did used to, and Tim is correct, we used to have board workshops, we used to have committees. Some committees met pretty regularly, some met as needed, then we had workshops. Now, the difference being is, I mean, as I'm seeing it, and Michelle, certainly correct me if I'm wrong, because, you know, it's been a lot of years, so correct me if I'm wrong. So when we used to have a workshop, we might have something presented to us at a workshop, and then literally two weeks later when we had our meeting, that's when we were voting on it. So the format we've gone to now has actually, even though it's committee and it's, it's going through a committee discussion, it's actually a longer period of time that we have to actually think about it, ask questions, talk about it, see it presented to us, than it is if we went back to the structure of Am I remembering correctly? Because then we would have a workshop, we'd have it presented. Two weeks later, we could be voting on it. Now, that doesn't mean that it, it wasn't something that wasn't going to be next month, but often that's the way things were. You're seeing it at the workshop, two weeks later, you're voting on it. That doesn't leave a whole lot of turnaround time for discussion that way. So this way allows for committees as appropriate to hear the information from admin as far as what they're thinking. It allows for a meeting to hear it presented as a discussion item and any discussion that needs to happen. Any time for questioning and discussion, discussion all the way up to the next meeting or after, depending on when it falls, when it becomes an action item to be voted on. So actually the time frame in which we have things is a much longer time frame now than what we used to have when we had the workshops and agendas. And I, I went back through my agendas and pulled them up to make sure that I wasn't completely off here. So, I mean, for me, I like having it be a discussion over that longer period of time as opposed to back to back in one month, two weeks apart. Jason, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, but I think we could accomplish the same thing with the, with the workshop and the meeting. Um, and, and if the workshop is really a combined committee meeting, 
essentially, right? You have the conversation there. It could still be presented at the next board meeting as discussion item. And then again at the workshop if we need to, or start with the board meeting as a discussion item. This is a new discussion item. It's a new business. Um, then we work through it at the workshop the next month um, and then right. vote on it two weeks later. Kind Absolutely. Of thing. And I think some, there's, I mean, there's, we can right. do it. there's plenty of ideas. I just think it's one of the, I think it would be smarter for us to wait until we know who our next superintendent is interim wise. I mean, certainly these are discussions we can have and we can make these adjustments with an interim because a year long interim is a long time. So, I mean, I, I would think we would treat it at that point of, do we wait, do we figure out where our incoming is, see what the format they really like to use, what their ideas are, and then make the adjustments at that point. Is that okay with everybody? I mean, I think that we need to do what kind of works best for us as a board too. And Absolutely. Um, so I would suggest just recording the committee meetings instead of shaking everything up completely upside down. But, you know, if it is a workshop where the full board is present, um, that makes it easier then. So that I wouldn't have to watch the stream the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say the one thing, the one question I have is that it was the difference between a workshop and a meeting just that you didn't ever plan on voting at a workshop. Was that the difference? Correct. Unless there was something that was time sensitive or that came up that was odd. Typically, there was not a, a list of things. It wasn't things. a usual There's not, Right. So instead of being a committee meeting, I mean, it could be a three, four hour workshop, sometimes more, you know, just depending on how it worked out. So it would be that kind of a workshop. Then two weeks later, you would have a meeting. But you could almost do just rolling two week board meetings right like essentially almost do that and then treat each one as a workshop slash board meeting and you could workshop things and then either if they were ready to vote on in two weeks you could vote if they weren't you put it to the one in four weeks right or if the, even the one in six weeks that's sort of a thing if you did it on more of a rolling basis i know we're work workshopping ideas right now <laughs> that yeah. maybe we don't need to do because we're maybe uh, getting a little bit ahead of ourselves i i and i'm also fine with waiting until we have you know, the next superintendent before making those decisions about changing anything right now. Um, I think that's reasonable enough and that we can, you know, figure out what are the changes we need to make at that point. Okay. I mean, I, I think that I'm on board with just waiting to see. I, I know I, ultimately we're the employer of a superintendent, but we don't want to steamroll anyone to make them feel like we don't care what you're comfortable with. Um, also, I know that we need to figure out logistically, like, who, what, how much, whatever, would go into recording the com committee meeting minutes. And I think, or not minutes. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> no, uh, what would all go into that? Uh, and I think the only thing that would be worse than not taking any action and sitting on our hands would be taking action and taking it. I think people would be really upset if we said, yep, we're going to do this. And then someone comes along and says, I'm really not comfortable. These are the reasons you should consider that. I also don't know what happens if we're talking contract negotiations, if we have to ask people to leave, to turn off cameras. I don't know what are the implications of all of that. So, I mean, I think that I've wanted to have this recorded for a while. And I know Eric Van Gessel has been a huge proponent for a very long time, like uh, probably the past two plus years. So, <laughs> I mean, it's something that I think that a lot of us want to do, but I do think that we should consider what all the implications are and make a decision because once it's done, it is going to look like we are trying to be non-transparent if for whatever reason we realize that it's not going to work out for us to continue doing it. So... I think in the whole transparency phase of that, we probably should be recording it. I think that's what people are going to want, and it it is a transparent that way, um, as opposed to the committees and you know the workshops. I can see either one working really. I think that if we're going to change to a point where we start recording committees, though, we should just simply go back to workshops. Because I think at the end of the day, I think that, um, and again, yes, is the logistics part of it one thing? That's fine. 
but I think that it becomes very confusing, or not, not very confusing, I think it could be very confusing for people to understand that, that those discussions are not a decision-making body. And if you put it in that respect, I think that it, it gets just a little, it muddies the waters, I think, a little bit. So I, I guess my whole thought is if it's, if it's that important to record those, then I think we should go back to talking about whether we need to do a meeting of the whole as a workshop versus, versus committees. Um, could I also ask, I guess, that maybe, I don't know, Dr. Merton, if you can speak for the rest of the admin or if others have thoughts on this, but like how how then you treat some of those like confidential discussions that need to happen, whether it is around like contract negotiations or how Social that work. works. So I, I think it makes it very difficult. So for contract negotiations, you can always go into closed session. You, have, you can only do that with the full board. Um, but take, for example... So Sorry. So if we were recording a committee meeting, we couldn't, like, do a closed session at a committee meeting because we weren't technically Not unless a full meeting of the board. Because it's a full group of the board, it yeah. still needs to fall under the Open Meetings Act. So typically that's why you're in a situation where if you do a workshop and a meeting, that you may also still have committees then on top of those two. Mm -hmm. Or you could be, but you're right. So, so there's certain circumstances where you can still be in closed session, but it's the same as it is for a regular meeting when it applies to workshops. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, but you, but we wouldn't do that at a committee meeting. Is that what I'm hearing? You, 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 can't. you really can't at no, a can't do that at a committee meeting. No. Okay. You're, you're either going to be open Correct. or you're going to be closed at a committee meeting because okay. you are less than a quorum of the board. Yeah. Um, but a committee meeting never has to be open. Um, yes. Yeah. Check. Okay. Understood. All right. Sorry, I didn't mean to muddy that for you, but yeah. Thank you. So, so part of the, the the focus of a committee meeting is for a subgroup of the board to examine and study an issue deeper, maybe uh, share their thoughts from a perspective of a board member, um, or give the administration maybe. An opportunity to before we take it to the full board to say this is kind of what we're thinking. Please, you know, share your your thought, your insight of what might be missing, uh, what might we think about differently, what might we need to investigate prior to going to the full board for this discussion. And the way we have done it is, uh, unless it's a time sensitive issue, when it goes to the full board, it's a discussion, but you're not asked to to vote, but it's partly guided by the input of the <coughs> subcommittee who, because they sat on that committee for a while, they start to become somewhat resident experts in a particular area. Um, if you go away from that structure, or when I see districts who will do the committee of the whole, mm -hmm. you basically take the time of the two committees and you just cram them together. That's what one of your meetings are going to be like in every uh, other week, you know, in the range of probably two to four or five hours. But it makes the second meeting much shorter. And some districts still then end up doing a committee structure. Some do, some don't. Uh, but that committee structure is generally not public or not open to the public because they still go back and say, before we spend four or five hours digging into something, might we want to have a small subgroup of the board help us think through, like, this is what we're thinking, this is where we're going? <clears throat> Please. And, and, and generally what I see is those are not public meetings because it's no different than administration calling a meeting with various principals or various staff members if we're considering a, something to really look at the pros and cons and just have open dialogue. When you open that up, and you're, you're certainly welcome to, take, for example, um, the discussion that we just had earlier about what to deal with uh, for the finances. We had a presentation. We presented to the board in April. The board reacted and said, we're concerned with these numbers. Um, and might we look at some other things? I directed my staff to look at some opportunities 
we had a discussion with the first committee. Um, and one of the things that we talked about is it's having this come before the board to get some, um, hey, this is what we're thinking. What are you thinking? Should we go deeper? Have we gone deep enough? Uh, and the next step is if the board says, you know what, you've not gone deep enough, we have more work to do. If they say you've gone too far, we back off. If they said it's just right, the next step is now we need to contact the building administrators and say, and what we did is say, we want you to reach out to the following people in a one-on-one -on -one fashion. As one person said, you know, to hear it through the grapevine, when you open this up publicly, and that's not a conversation you can go into closed session with. So you don't give us the opportunity to very, be very transparent because people could be sitting there taking pictures to sending text messages and say, hey, I heard this is going to happen before our staff or our administration. We don't even have that time to make that happen. And we've seen that come out of committee meetings before. Um, and so people start sharing what they their version of a thought with the public and the other half of the board or the other four members of the board haven't even had heard it for the first time. And then that becomes a problem where I've seen from my experience where board members are saying, well, wait a minute. How is it that we're hearing about this through everyone else other than administration? Teachers are, how are we hearing this from everyone else other than our administrators? And the principals are saying, how are we hearing from this from everyone other than you know, our central administration or the board. And that's why most districts don't get into this super open everything because it, it gets to a point where you can get into this weird space of almost as board members abdicating your responsibility for due diligence, deep research, free flowing discussion with administration prior to actions of taking it to a full board and discussion because we have a meeting on Thursday and then uh, or on Tuesday and then on Thursday and in some weeks it's Thursday and then it's the following Tuesday depending on how the calendar hit and if you think of that last conversation and what we just heard it becomes very offensive to people even though no one had the intent to offend our intent was to say, we, board, we heard you. We've taken some time to do a little legwork. We want to get some feedback to know if we're along the right path. And we'd like to get that feedback as, as your, or I would like to get that feedback as your direct employee before I go and speak to other staff members because this will have an impact on their life. At that same time, you are opening yourself up to significantly muting the voice, I think, that you're going to have for these conversations because it's going to put your staff, your superintendent, your administrative staff in an awkward spot. And that's why you see so many districts, they'll do either a committee of the whole and a regular board meeting. They will do a regular board meeting, and before anything is voted, it goes to the board for at least two discussions, one so everyone can hear it before there's a vote, and there can be some change uh, of the final decision before there's a vote. But I don't see a lot of them going through the point of open committee meetings up to the public, recording them, putting them out there. If the board want to record a committee meeting for their own purpose, and we can uh, make that access available to board members so that you can do that, that's something that we consider. But when you open it up, I think the board needs to be fully conscious of the fact that there will be some times, and, and there's going to be a lot of discussions that are not allowable under Michigan compiled law as closed session conversations that you're then going to have to have in front of others in the public that may get out to your staff in a less desired way, even if you're just 
bantering back and forth with ideas because we've seen that happen. Don't you, if you, so let's say you recorded a committee meeting for the purpose of other board members getting to see it. Does that not become a foyable item? I think it does become a foyable item. What it does allow you the time to do is maybe allow your board members to see it and your administration to take action prior to. I wouldn't actually recommend that, to no. be quite honest. No, I But I'm just kind of letting you know the, the realm of what I understand. No, I just want everybody to be clear on yeah. it. And the, the problem with the whole timing thing is, let's say, even if you record a committee meeting, there's still the lag time in that getting posted and out there. So that doesn't solve the problem of information getting to the right people at the right time before it gets out in the wrong way. Right? Correctly. It doesn't I mean, solve that, that lag time problem at all. Okay. Um, and if you start recording all these meetings, you're going to significantly add some time to some of your hourly staff in terms of the prep on the, the, the front end uh, and then the prep after the meeting to get the, the, the video ready to go out to YouTube or whatever venue. So it's a layered issue. You know, we don't want to be less than transparent, but, but we've really gone well beyond what most districts that I've ever experienced have done in the way of transparency. Um, and at some point, I think the board needs to be sensitive moving forward to how this may hamper what you may see later as getting good information from your administrative staff or being able to provide and have some uh, critical dialogue prior to something rolling out to the board. And I think we just saw an example and we just heard from a staff member who said that very same thing. And I think I heard from a principal who said, I felt like I basically I wish I would have had more time to know about this. I made a conscious decision as a superintendent that the first group that need to know what we're thinking, because they could just shut it all down, is the Board of Education. And so that is the first priority before we go to the next step. So at some point, when you're thinking about um, process, when you're thinking about chain of command, you know, how organizations as highly functioning runs, we have to think about, um, as a board of directors, there's a reason that we're in this position. Um, and we have to think about the impact in multiple ways and how to be as transparent as possible, but also make sure we set the district up so that we can go about doing the business that we need to do. So just a couple of things, because there was a lot in that. Um, you know, just in the last finance committee meeting, right, we did have kind of a situation where Mr. Kingsbury was was presenting the options that, that we heard about and, you know, reassigning of teachers. And at the end, he's he asked, can we have some discretion on communicating this out? Um, people can provide discretion. A recording cannot. Um, it's just there, right? So the only discretion we would have is a delay in the recording. Um, so I think that changes some of the conversation, knowing if it's recorded. Um, and, and I'm not saying that's necessarily a wrong thing, because if you remember, Dr. Martin, um, when I first got on the board, I was like, let's record everything. Because um, we were at the dialogues with docs, and they were being recorded. I'm like, we should record everything. Um, but I, I, I do know that it changes after working on the committees and, and seeing what happens, um, being on the curriculum committee and seeing, you know, Ms. Burkowski, when she was here, present like half-finished presentations on curriculum maps and things, um, to have those now permanently out there as half-finished products as a recording um, is, is something different. And, I, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just something we should consider as a board as well, that uh, if, we're, if we're getting work prog work in progress type things presented to us, um, and then if they get recorded, it's it's just there for somebody to look at potentially um, out of context or, you know, not have the, the follow on to, to see, okay, the final presentation was made sometime later. So I think we just need to uh, understand that. Um, and then transparency wise, um, again, I'm all for the transparency piece, but I mean, the reality of it is we had a contentious bond election. We had people not understanding things that were being presented or misunderstanding or whatever. We had misinformation being presented. We had all of this stuff. People would ask me questions 
I would literally send them the link or tell them to go watch the October 11th board meeting where we discussed all of these things. I would have somebody come to me and say, did you think about doing this? Did you think, yes, that was option D on October 11th? Did you think about, yes, that was option G on October 11th? Go watch those meetings or that meeting and you can see it. Um, a week before the election, it had a grand total of 56 views. And at least a dozen of them were mine because um, People would ask questions, I mean, like, what, we talked about it, what did we say? So I went back and I would go watch it. Um, and YouTube does count repeat views as distinct views up for a 24 hour period, it's an, a whole algorithm. But that I said- it. I viewed it a couple times too. Right, so, <laughs> so, you know. so I, I just wanna make sure that when we do things that we're doing them for purposeful reasons, that we understand that there's a cost to that because we're tripling uh, presumably Kelly's time to record and then upload and, and process, possibly somebody from IT um, to make sure that the system is, is up and going or whomever, right? So there's extra people now that we have to account for. And so I just want to make sure that we're doing it for the right reasons, that we're doing it for purposefully and it, it makes sense. So I just want to add that you both said you did go back in watch that meeting and so I do think that there is a lot of value in the recording being able to say yeah we did talk about that um, so I think it's but that's it's a regular board here. meeting where we made board decisions that was a full board seven people voting and making decisions and the recording was very useful so I think that's right no. but that's the difference between a committee meeting not being a decision making body versus a meeting where we are making decisions as seven of us as one board that's, that would be my only concern. So if I'm understanding it correctly, if we were to go to a workshop, we would all seven be present and it would be a decision-making body and then it would be fine to record that. Correct. Yes. And I'll, I'll add too, it could be something that we're, we're not, we don't decide to weigh in on. So it could be push, could be decided on at a, at a workshop mm -hmm. or, or not. But it's still seven people in the room, yeah, and it's correct. still a decision-making body, therefore subject to the Open Meetings Act at that point. Correct. What does that mean? Like, okay, so currently we have our meetings in the morning. I have two very small kids. What happens if a kid is sick? Then it's just no, because right now we're pretty flexible with people, like if Dr. Martin's at a convention or Sarah's, <laughs> at a convention, <laughs> I can't think of a different example that like zooming in is acceptable. Does that if that's off the table if it becomes a full? Because I think that essentially yes, that makes it. I mean, I think that every single one of us have at least missed one committee meeting, and then that I think is kind of concerned. Not Brittany, <laughs> perfect <laughs> attendance, but I mean, then I feel like it. You kind of miss out on that like I get filled in when I miss stuff but if it's decision making then it becomes a lot more challenging um, at least for me correct I mean that could be the case for sure but yes and and certainly you're right if you miss a committee meeting now it is your responsibility to follow around with the chair of that committee and find out you know what have I missed or is there an update that I should get I mean even though that information is still going to come to the entire board and there are minutes associated with it it certainly is the right thing to do um, you know, my whole thing is, is I, I just, I don't think it, in my mind, it's not as simple as recording or not recording for committee meetings, which is, I guess, my only reason to take pause and say, do we get our interim superintendent and then have this discussion about, you know, what meeting structure do they prefer? Then we can share our preference as well and then come up with what works best for all of us at that time. I think that a lot of people seem like they're open to it, that it's something that we want to explore. The only thing that I kind of don't want to is not recording the or the meetings in any capacity for the public, but for ourselves, because I think that anyone would be like, if you can have that, or I can't we, it kind of like looks bad, but. I don't think we would do that anyway, because again, like I said, if, if it is, it's no different than emails or anything else. If you're recording, uh, a committee meeting at that point in time, even though it's not a decision-making body, it would still be a foilable item. I just need some kind of, I guess, consensus on how we want to move forward here so that this discussion's been had. Are we going to um, revisit this conversation, you know, come July, August, when we have a 
an interim in place is I, mean, I just need to understand where we're going here so that so that our admin and support staff all know too I feel like I'm good waiting until an interim is in place or Dr. Martin lets us know that he's saying and then we can revisit this discussion <laughs> not to beat a dead horse but you haven't accepted a contract so yeah <laughs> gotcha. okay Tim I'm, I'm fine with waiting. Um, I think having an initial discussion and sharing the ideas with all the trustees is, is healthy. And, and uh, yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, I agree. Same place. Same as the only thing I would want to add is that it does seem that our administrative staff does double duty a lot of times. Um, like they'll come and give the presentation to one committee and give a very similar presentation to the other. Mm -hmm. And with respect for their time as well, um, I like the idea of a workshop style where they can give that one presentation. Um, and I also think that there is a lot of value to the entire board having, um, knowing what that discussion was, not just the brief, here's the summary. So, um, you know, based on what was discussed tonight, it sounds like the only way for the full board to know what was discussed, if committee meetings can't be recorded and that's off the table, is to move the workshop. So, I mean, discussing that at the next opportunity would be my preference. Okay. Jason? Yeah, good. And, um, I mean, for me, I don't think recording the committee meetings is, is off the table. I just, if... If we record a June committee meeting and then in July go, we're going to switch to a workshop. Now we have one committee meeting out there recorded, and right. I think that looks really weird. Um, so um, I'm in favor of waiting until we have an interim and figure out what our structure will be and then revisit. Okay. John? I'm all for waiting, too. I agree with that. All right. I appreciate it. And so we will plan to, we will wait to hear from Daryl. We will get some more information on maybe what it looks like for us moving forward. Um, we can reconvene this conversation then at another time. I am sorry that it got pushed off to May. That was certainly not the intent, as we had hoped to have a, a board workshop retreat kind of thing in March or early April, and that's just not the way it worked out. So we will revisit this at our earliest convenience after we know what direction we're heading. Good with that? Okay. All righty. So I just need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank Second. you. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, anyone opposed? All right, have a good night. Thank you, everybody.